So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another windy Sunday afternoon here at Old Car Auto Guy. Today we are going to be tackling bubbles. You don't know what bubbles is? Well, take a look. This is bubbles. Bubbles is a 2009 Kia Sportage. It's just an LX model, four cylinder manual transmission front wheel drive. We lifted it, we put 31 inch tires on it, and I crashed it. As you can see, there's something that's not right there. Today, we are going to fix that. So we've got a little bit of blocking, a jack, a jack stand. We're gonna use this rear floor mat to help distribute the weight on the ground so that this thing doesn't sink. What we gotta do, we gotta get bubbles jacked up in the air and try and get that tire flipped up underneath so we can roll it again. So, let's get to her. Junior's going to be helping us out with this by holding the camera. He's not here right now, but he is on his way. He's gone to grab the shop truck. Uh, the shop truck is something that we're going to use to pull bubbles away from the Ford Fusion. Basically, once we get bubbles jacked up, we're going to try and swing that wheel back out, set it back down, and then we'll use uh, the shop truck to pull this thing away. I don't want to use this because that is for sale. I just grabbed it for the moment to bring this jack and stuff down here so that I didn't have to wait for Junior. So now we've got to get underneath there and find out where we can jack that's not going to be in the way of any moving parts. So what I'm thinking is we're going to get right up here on the bottom side of the transmission. We'll jack on that and it should move everything up enough so that we should be able to swing things out of the way. Well, that's definitely jacking it up, but that wood doesn't look very safe. So we're going to have to find another jacking point. Maybe we'll move back here a little bit. I'm going to get the wheel, one wheel off the ground. So we've got a jack stand here kind of up against the bottom part of the front subframe. We're going to go back there in the middle of bubbles on the frame rail that goes back with a second jack stand to help support the weight over there. Then, I don't know what. Because I've never done this before. We'll get something figured out. And you can stop yelling at your screen because I can't hear you. <laughs> Anyways, Junior, where are you? Hurry. And the scary part about this whole thing is there's not a lot of room to work in there. And with this thing only being held up by a jack and a jack stand that may hold it, well, we've got to do our best to be safe and get that under there. So, let's climb in. That should do it. Now, let's go find the new jacking point and see if we can get this a little bit higher. Oh my goodness. So I just noticed that the sway bar link is bent at a 90 degree angle. So in order to get that spindle swung around there again, we're gonna have to get that cut off or take the bolt out somewhere along the way. So I'm gonna get some tools and we'll see if we can cut that out. Well, you see now the problem that I have that I got the wrench on there is I can't get in there to get any leverage on it. So we've gotta think of something different to get us more leverage. And I think I know what it is. Well, was I right or was I right? <laughs> it's stance now. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call that? The kachow? No. Yeah, <laughs> kachow. <laughs> what do they call that, camber? Yeah, camber. <laughs> Bubble says camera. <laughs> All right, so before I pass the camera over to Junior to be my official cameraman, old man Sawyer over there mowing his lawn like 
We got a video to do here, Rob. I know he's gonna be watching this at some point. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get this thing up on the frame. If we can get her in there. Oh, I'm scratch paint. Bye bye, Kachow. Let's check your tie rod, sir. Oh yeah, there's something loose there. <laughs> Little bit of play in your ball joint there, sir. Your axle seal is leaking a little bit. Just a little bit. That broke off both upper control arm now, so. Wow. <laughs> We've got to figure out how to get all of this. So we've got our bent sway bar link here. The only thing else that's holding everything together is this tie rod. So we're gonna try and spin the nut off the tie rod, get it broke free, everything will come apart. Then we can take our axle, hopefully stuff it back in the, in the spot there where the CV uh, boot is, and at least get everything lined up so that things go back up into place. Then once we set it back down on its own weight, we'll have to figure out what we're gonna do with this lower control arm. He's in pretty rough shape, bye. Pretty thin though, isn't it? Yeah. See broke. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna get this thing off and we'll get right back with you. All right, we get the uh, BFH. We're gonna uh, give her a small little tap here. Oh. And now, all of this. Uh, with the exception of that sway bar. Should. That's the only thing that's holding it in. Apparently right now it is. <laughs> All those suspension parts look pretty beat. <laughs> oh. We probably did way too much. Way much more to this thing than we probably should have. And the condition it was in. Well, it was in bad condition when we first got it. This is what happens. There's a little bit of play there. That's probably what all that <laughs> crashing and beating was when you were going in bumps. Yeah. And there's a better look, guys, at the whoop at the lower control arm. Both ends. Pretty thin. Rusty. Yeah. Well, you can see right here, all the sand and stuff up in there. That's what uh, rots it from the inside out too. Oh. Welcome to Canada. Welcome to Canada. So at this point, she's sitting too far up in the air for me to get that strut in place and get that axle in. So, looks like we're gonna have to lower her down some bike. So in an effort to get the axle to pop back into socket and get the strut lined up with its hull, I think the axle actually just popped in. So we're gonna uh, get Junior to lower it down so that that strut is kind of up into place and then it should be resting on its own, uh, on its own weight. So let's get that done. All right, so just lower it down slowly. Perfect. Keep going, keep going. Just like that. All right, drop her. So she's sitting a little bit too much forward here. So don't let it go all the way yet. We'll still get that tie rod connected again. And uh, then we'll see what we're gonna do. 
All right, so we got the tie rod connected back on. It's just kind of finger tight down there right now. So we're gonna let the jack down, get that struck back in place one more time and get it set on its own weight. Hopefully we can pull this thing out of here. So we've got bubbles sitting on all fours on its own weight. Uh, this wheel likely is not gonna roll very well, but we're gonna get the tools put in the back of the truck, hook the tow rope back to the truck, and then we're gonna drag her up onto level surface so that we can get it closer to the hoist. Once we get it up that way, then if we have some spare time in the next few days, we'll get it pushed in, put it up on the hoist, and get that control arm welded, at least not so we can drive it. Don't even think about that. More so so that when the time comes, we have to roll this thing up onto a trailer, we can do that. With that axle hopefully in place, uh, Junior's gone to get the booster pack, and the keys, we're gonna try and start it, see if it'll actually drive under its own power. If so, we won't need the tow rope at all. We've got the booster pack hooked up, Junior's inside. Go ahead and give her a shot, see if she'll start. Stalling it, just see if it'll roll forward a bit. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> that wheel wants to turn all on its own. Well, we've got to figure out a way to get that in there and keep the wheel from turning as you're driving because with no lower control arm, it just wants to go all wonky. So let's get that figured out before we start driving it. All right, so what we got to be able to do is we've got this ratchet strap. We're going to try and pull this control arm up and cinch it back to the subframe, kind of wedge it into place so that's not kind of flopping all over. So let's do it, I guess. Okay, so we've got the uh, ratchet straps all up in there holding the control arm together. Junior's behind the wheel. We have no brakes. But we're going to take it easy. Just let the clutch out a little bit, see if it goes forward. And she's moving under her own power! All right, hang on. Okay, so very slowly, we'll see how far we can get without having to hook the truck up on it. Slowly. Remember, you got no brakes. Bubbles lives again, folks. He lives again. A little bit of a toe out there on that one side. Don't go backwards. Is that as far as it's going? Don't let it go backwards. Don't let it go backwards, because that... So the reason why I didn't want him to roll backwards is because I've got that set up with those straps to keep that wheel forward this way. So when it's rolling forward, there's a little bit of play. But as soon as it starts to roll back, it wants to pull everything this way and get all off cockeyed, which is what it's done. So I think what happened was when he came up here to uh, come up this little hill, it pulled the axle out again and he had no grip. So we'll get the shop truck pulled around and we'll tow her up the rest of the way. So we did make it this far. Junior was too chicken to give her the beans coming up that hill. He's afraid something would break. Spiders. Anyways, let's see if we can get her over there and out of the way. I think she's bound up. It's just the front. 
bumper. <laughs> it's just the front bumper. Go straight. Doesn't want to turn. Doesn't want to turn. That creates a predicament. So I think what we might have to do is just kind of push it back here a little bit out of the way as best we can. And uh, go for round two. But today we did have a victory. We got it sitting on all four wheels. We got it moving. We got it up this far onto some flat ground. So now we should be able to work on it a little bit easier. And uh, maybe this is where we load it onto the trailer from for its big day. <laughs> I heard something ding. So I guess the plan of action now is just to get bubbles moved back over onto this gravelly area. So at the very least, when the time comes to pull her up onto a trailer, that's what we'll be able to do. We've got it this far, which is a step in the right direction. It's sitting on all fours, and that precisely is what we were trying to accomplish today. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and enjoying what we have to offer here with Project Bubbles. Don't forget, if you're not subscribed, please do so now, because once we reach 2,000 subscribers, we're gonna blow it up. 12 pounds of tannerite's what I got, and I'm not gonna release the video until we hit 2,000, so I hope that you're able to help us out with that. If you check the first link in the description box below, it is a link to my new Spreadshirt store. Check out the new Demise of Bubbles t-shirt on the screen now, as well as the Focus on the Windshield and the original Old Car Auto Guy t-shirts. Car Guy and Six Fan shows Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central, 8 Eastern, 9 local time. I hope you can join us. It's Car Talk. We have a lot of fun talking about cars and about our channels, and we'll actually have some guests on once in a while. Grant Tomby and I, his link is the second one down below. If you're not subscribed to him, please go and do that now. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you, God bless. We'll see you in the next video.